All right, we'll get the old Fummins geared up, ready to go because I sold my big trailer. Well, this is the last time the big trailer will be hooked up to the Fummins. It's going to a new home. I sold it to, of all people, to Varsh. He was looking for a trailer. I had posted this one just to see. I, I was toying with the idea of selling it, and I was like, I don't know. He needed a trailer. He wanted to buy it, and uh, I, I was really conflicted. I almost like I almost didn't sell it because it's going to be hard for me to find what I want as a replacement, which would be the only point in selling it because it's a good trailer, and I just have not had good luck finding what I want to find. But he needed a trailer. I want to get a different trailer. We're sending it and just hoping that we find a replacement. So anyway, I got it cleaned out. I did not realize how much stuff I had in that trailer. This is a small fraction of it. S spare parts and fluids and chargers and tents and chairs and freaking jack and fuel jugs and whew, there's a lot of stuff that was stored in there and now I gotta store it until I find another trailer. So yeah, it was a hard hunt. It was a very, very difficult hunt trying to find a replacement trailer, but I think I found one that in theory is perfect. It's missing a couple little things that I want in a trailer, but otherwise in every way is exactly what I want. And then there's also a backup plan in case this one doesn't work out. But me and Raldo are gonna cruise up. About two hours away to go look at it. Hopefully it all goes well, fingers crossed. Cause if it, if it works out, this is exactly what I want in a trailer. So let's hit the road and the old Fummins, she's dirty, needs a wash. Here we are. All right, well, here it is. The guy should be here soon to show us around it. Pretty clean. Got some dings down there, but really not bad. About as good a shape as I could have hoped. Tandem axle, kind of matching wheels. Let's see, I'll show you guys more of it if we buy it, or as we go. Well, we did it. We brought it home. I am super, super stoked on this thing. We managed to come to the price I wanted to spend, and this trailer, is exactly what I was looking for. And that may sound like whatever, but it is a very hard trailer to find, let me tell you. Let me tell you. I've been looking for this specific trailer basically for a while and I have not been able to find one. So my old trailer was a 36 foot gooseneck. For those of you who are more familiar with like a bumper pull, that's a 28 foot floor space. So imagine a 28 foot bumper pull, 36 overall, cause there's eight feet on the gooseneck. This is a 32 foot, 24 foot floor space. This is the exact size I wanted. My 36 foot was just always overkill, especially for the Miata. You know, my LS Miata is what I tow 99% of the time. And there was just so much wasted space. And I hated that. I hated towing this trailer that was much bigger than I needed and just having all this empty space there. I like efficiency. I like things being efficient. And after using that trailer for a while, I determined that I could go down to a 32 foot, still comfortably fit everything I needed, have room for everything, everything in its place, and it not be cramped, but also dropping four feet, which drops weight and gives you more maneuverability, allows you to get in more places. The 36 foot was just kind of that borderline size where you question whether or not you're gonna fit in the gas station, you know? And a lot of times I'd just stop at truck stops because I didn't want to risk not being able to get into a gas station, having to get back on the highway and go down to the next exit. Um, whereas this trailer, we should be able to get into a lot more places. It should be about that length where we can get in just about anywhere. I mean, it's really only about four feet longer than my open trailer. So anyway, that was that was one of the reasons. Another reason I wanted to get a different trailer was my old trailer was meant to work with a short bed truck. So the enclosed portion of the gooseneck here stopped about here. So that way you could turn a short bed truck 90 degrees without hitting the corner of this on the corner of your cab. But I have a long bed truck. So I could make use of a full length gooseneck and it really not affect me negatively in any way and I just get more space. So I'm dropping off the floor space that I don't need and adding more room where I do need it up top because I store a lot of stuff up top. So yeah, 32 foot was my number, very hard to find. I think I've only found one or two other ones for sale and neither of them were aluminum. This trailer is all aluminum. I was really hoping to find an all aluminum trailer and I found an all aluminum 32 foot ATC, which is a really nice trailer brand gooseneck like this is literally my dream trailer this is exactly what i wanted you can see the frame all aluminum and then pulling this thing around granted it's empty effortless and my other trailer wasn't bad to tell it was actually pretty light for what it was but this thing starting and stopping and stuff i mean it's crazy the difference again we'll have to see how it is loaded but i'm already pretty stoked on the change up so yeah i was really happy when i found this thing shorter goosenecks in general are hard to find 
32 especially, there's not a lot of short goosenecks that short, but even like a 36 foot, it generally seems like if it's 36 foot or under, people just go with a bumper pull. You know, you see a lot of people with 28 foot bumper pulls, even 30, 32 foot bumper pulls. Usually when you see a gooseneck trailer, it's a 40 foot, a 44 foot, a 48 foot. They're big, big trailers. I don't want a big trailer, but I wanted a gooseneck. After having towed both, a bumper pull enclosed and a gooseneck enclosed, I mean, the difference is night and day. One, stability. Cruising down the highway with a gooseneck trailer, it's like you feel the weight going up hills, accelerating, decelerating. But as far as it tugging on the truck, it's it's non-existent. You pass a semi, you hit wind gusts, all of that stuff, and there's virtually no effect. You you almost don't even notice that the trailer's back there. Whereas a bumper pull, it's always tugging on the truck. And there's things you can do. There's anti-load distribution bars and all of that. But the stability of a gooseneck is just so good. And it just makes long trips so much nicer. You don't have to be so on edge if you're in like a weird gusty situation or things like that. Like it's just effortless. And uh, you know, that was something I really liked about the gooseneck. And a big reason I didn't want to go to a bumper pull because I tried to talk myself into a bumper pull because they're a lot easier to find what I want in a bumper pull. I could find a 24, 26, 28 foot aluminum cabinets loaded out bumper pull pretty easily. Again, the goosenecks are harder to find, but I am glad I stuck it out. The other reason for the gooseneck maneuverability, like getting into my driveway here, I've got to cut it pretty much 90 degrees. Maybe I could make that work with a bumper pull, but it would be tough. And then the, the biggest reason, the number one reason I wanted to stick with a gooseneck is tire storage. You know, most of the time I'm towing a car, I'm going drifting and I can fit so many tires. Even my old trailer with the shorter enclosed portion of the gooseneck. I mean, I would fit 16 tires up there, two tents, chairs, I could cram so much stuff up there and it was just boom, up and out of the way. Toss it up there, grab it down, didn't have to strap it, didn't have to secure it, didn't have to do anything. So that was really single-handedly the biggest reason that I couldn't talk myself into going down to a bumper pull. So anyway, all my reasons <laughs> aside, this is it. The, uh, the outside's really nice. I wish it was black to match the truck, but I'm really happy with how nice the white is. It, oh, it looks so good. The aluminum's all nice and fresh. There's barely any damage on the outside. There's like a little ding right there um, and some little small dents in the door. Other than that, this thing, this thing is in really, really good condition. It's also a tandem axle. It's a similar weight rating. They're two 7,000 pound axles versus three 5,000 pound axles. So 14 versus 15,000 pounds. Um, but it's just a little more inconspicuous. You're passing by DOT with a triple axle. It looks like you're to towing some serious stuff. Whereas a tandem axle looks more like, you know, just a guy going to towing his car around so you know that that's not that big of a deal but you can get in trouble with dot for just the rating of your truck and trailer being over the limit so all right that's a lot of jibber jabbering on my reasons i'm just i'm real excited that i actually found exactly what i wanted and i had been looking all over i'd been looking like all over the country on these race trailer for sale pages and i was willing to go far out of state to get what i wanted if i found it and then i happened to look on local marketplace and found this one two hours away <laughs> like ah as you can tell, pretty happy about this. So let's, uh, I'm gonna get it unlocked, show you the inside, and then uh, we're gonna start loading it up. built-in latches instead of having the semi truck kind of style that comes over and you have a little lock here they're like built into the frame a little silly stuff most people probably wouldn't care about but i enjoy it makes me happy it's crazy how light the door is too compared to my old door so one of the cool features the built-in LED lights that are powered off the 12 volt system. There's a switch back here. That's the loading lights, which aren't there. There's a switch back here and a switch up here. So whichever door you come in, switch the lights on or off. It's the little things too. Like my old trailer didn't have a latch for the door to stay open. So I had to bungee cord it. This one, nice built in latch. All right, time for a tour of the inside. Now the inside's not quite as nice as the outside, it's a little more beat up. So this shower is used for hauling like show motorcycles around. So it did come with these motorcycle stands, which I'm just gonna sell. I might save one or two of them in case I ever start riding dirt bikes or something or wanna bring one with me. 
Um, but they're pretty nice. We gotta get those out. But anyway, it's nice because it's all finished inside with the nice aluminum paneling. The difference between a trailer, like if you haven't shopped for trailers, the difference between a trailer that's just like plywood inside or bare inside and a trailer with just walls and a roof and some whites, price difference is nuts. So, and I really wanted one that was finished out inside. So I was glad we were able to find one. But yeah, anyway, you got your white switches. It's got a power inverter. I really like that. It doesn't have a generator door or anything. I like that because I never used a generator. I had a generator in my old trailer. I did not use it, not one time. You know, Ben has the RV, we stay in there. Like I had no, no need ever for a generator. So I like that this one doesn't have that and instead it's just set up with a nice power inverter setup and a, and a battery. So that's the battery power inverter fuse system. These are the circuit breakers. It's just set up as a more simple setup, which I really like. So um, overall the floor's got some dings in it. It's got E-Track, which is kind of nice. Uh, I wouldn't put the E-Track in if, it, if I you know, was doing this. I don't really care to have it, it's better for like motorcycles and stuff but it is nice because i can kind of strap anything anywhere in the trailer he did repaint these walls here because they got rubbed from having tents strapped to them and then you know there's some scuff marks and tire marks up and down it that i'm going to try to clean off but i mean it, it, overall it's in pretty good shape we got built-in d-rings more built-in d-rings got a million ways to strap stuff down in this thing aluminum fours instead of plywood fours aluminum fender wells i mean like pretty much everything on this dang thing is aluminum I really like the built-in lights too. How they're recessed into the ceiling and they go all the way up and then the gooseneck portion, dude. This is wild. So seeing pictures of trailers with full goosenecks, it didn't look that different than my old trailer. It's like, man, it feels like my old trailer. That thing is deep. Seeing it in person, deep. There is so much room up here. <laughs> I don't even know how many tires they're gonna be able to fit up here. I mean, we could strap the tent back there. We could put it up here. I mean, I, with Miata tires, and this seems a little taller than my old trailer, it's hard to say. I might be able to stack three high, and three high, six, nine, 12, a lot. I could probably fit 30 or 40 tires up here. It's absurd. So again, this, this area was a big reason for keeping, keeping with a gooseneck. It's just so convenient to be able to toss stuff up here. Now, yes, you got a bumper pull, you could do tire racks on the walls, but then you gotta worry about them falling, you gotta make sure the tires are secured, if you know i have right hand and left hand drive cars so if you had it on that side and then you're getting out of the right hand drive car you got to duck under it so much nicer to be able to just fill up this gooseneck area with your tires yeah the carpet's all nice up here which is nice another cool thing this is kind of we're getting into kind of nerd talk i guess just little stuff that i've noticed because i've been looking for a while like i said when i was going to sell my trailer to Tavares, like i really wanted to bail on selling it because i was like i can't find a good replacement you know i can't find what i want i, I mean and there's no point in selling it to get just another basically my same trailer if i'm selling it the whole goal is to get what i'm looking for so anyway uh, I've looked a lot, and one thing that I noticed is on the shorter goosenecks, a lot of times the door is all the way up here. So I want to have a toolbox or some cabinets or something up here. If the door is all the way up there, you'd open the door and walk right into the cabinets. So I like that the door is a little smaller and pushed back a little bit so I can have a toolbox or whatever here. Um, so we are going to, the one thing this trailer is missing that I want that it doesn't have is cabinets. But I'm kind of, I'm okay with that because I have kind of a game plan of how I want to set up the cabinets that will work best for me and like the type of stuff I bring and all of that. So my game plan at the moment is get like a wide, tall, you know, bench top toolbox for here. Have some room next to it for like jack, jack stands, things like that. And then instead of having like the deep cabinets and having to put totes in them like I did with my old trailer, have a cabinet that's basically four to ceiling, really wide, comes out, you know, 10, 12 inches. So basically a shallow, wide, tall cabinet and store everything in there. Because my old trailer, I had cabinets up top. That's where most of the important stuff was because I could just open the cabinet and grab it. Whereas the stuff that was buried in the totes underneath the cabinets was always a pain to get to. I gotta dig two totes out to get to this one and Hope that that's the one that has the stuff in it. And I think it'll be more efficient, easier to access, easier to get to the stuff if it's laid out in like a, a shallow big cabinet. And then if I do have big stuff that doesn't fit in there, I've got way more room in the gooseneck to throw a couple of totes up in the back there and then have those if I need them as well. Um, and then I'd like to do fuel jug storage here and then maybe strap storage above that. And then like one or two of the little like aluminum shelf deals for storing, you know, oil and water and towels and cleaners and things like that. 
Um, so that's kind of my rough game plan at the moment. We'll have to see when we start setting it up, but that's kind of how I want to build it out. And I'm excited too that I get to build it out exactly how I want it and try to set it up to again, be as efficient as possible for me and what I bring to the track. So yeah, that is the overall tour of the trailer. I'm gonna rip these uh, motorcycle stands out of here, get this thing cleaned out, and then we're gonna try to shove the Miata in here and see how it fits. It feels like it's a little narrower than my old trailer, but it's it's the same width overall, so who knows? It's always hard to tell visibly. So I wanna see what it looks like, or what kind of room we have with the Miata in here, and I wanna see how the uh, approach angle is, because the ramp is a little bit higher up than it was on my old trailer because of the aluminum frame. So I'm just curious to see how it goes. Well, in the car, see if there's any weird, if we need to do some sort of race ramps, we need to get a longer flip down ramp deal or anything like that. So let's get to it. Well, it's nice to see it all cleared out in here. Not the freaking motorcycle stands. <laughs> Another nice thing about the slightly shorter trailer being four feet shorter with the truck pulled all the way to the front of my driveway, I've got four more feet to get the car turned in, in here. Now with the shop open like this, it's not a big deal, but once the shop's closed in and there's a wall here, it'll be nice to have that room to kind of three point turn and pull into the trailer without having to pull the truck out into the street. That's a small victory, but a victory nonetheless. So yeah, let's, uh, let's get the Miata in here and see what it looks like. Uh, with it about what a foot yeah, about a foot from the from the back door we have tons of room in front of it like tons of room and this is definitely the same width as my old trailer because we've got a good six inches there and probably eight to ten there that's about exactly what it was in my old trailer plenty of room Miata's pretty narrow uh, but yeah you can see up here you know if we have our fuel jugs going to you know somewhere in here plenty of room. Um, we'll have to try to end that cabinet probably somewhere around here, just so with a longer car we can still walk around the front of it. But I mean, overall, you can see there's still a lot of room left with the Miata in here. I mean, even with the toolbox coming out to here, we've still got, what, six feet from a toolbox to the front of the Miata. So that, again, was a big reason why I wanted to downsize. And then we have all this room up here. We have miles up here for everything else. I mean, we, we will have, for what I do, I don't think we'll ever run out of storage room in this trailer. We should always be able to, <laughs> to fit everything we need, which is the whole goal. Fit everything we need, but be as short and as light as possible. So I am curious. The FC is about as big as it gets. The Sephiro is a little bigger, but not a whole lot. Um, I want to pull that in here and see what it's like. I remember it being really tight on the fenders of my old trailer because it's pretty wide in the front. And I want to see with the extra length what it's like. The Miata is obviously the smallest car <laughs> that's going to go in here. So let's pull this out. Pull the RX-7 in. Take a gander.
vehicle is a little lessened because my driveway slopes down some, we could go even crazier and drive the truck on ramps, which would bring the back of the trailer down. But I, I try to avoid that. I don't like having extra steps on loading and loading the cars. I like for it to be quick. So we, I like to see if I can get it in as is. Ha. pretty far I mean we could strap it in as is but I think this might be wider than my old trailer at least between the fenders because I I would be scrubbing on that side to have the tiniest bit of room on this side it's at least the same width which is good that was definitely something I wanted to confirm but I mean toolbox here shelf to here still got room oh, I should turn the light on lights yeah sweet I mean the Saphiro will probably be Another foot, so imagine this thing probably eight inches forward, another foot, sphere will probably be to about here. So again, if we run the cabinets to about here, we could still get around it, still get to everything. I like that we've got those extra D-rings there to strap stuff in, jack, jack stands. But sweet, I'm happy with it. I'll show you guys at the back here. Yeah, you see what I mean? Like we could easily fit it here, like just like this, but uh, It'd just be kind of annoying to get the straps. One thing I do need to tackle is this back hinge here for this. It's just like the self tappers. It's starting to rip out of the aluminum. So we need to do that better. I might replace it entirely. Um, you can get like a four foot long one and then put risers on the back of the door to lift it up, which would just overall lessen this angle. If I'm gonna do it, I probably might as well do that. I mean, one of the really nice things about this trailer is like, this is it for me. This is the trailer I wanted. And the only way I would get rid of this trailer is if for some reason I started doing FD or something and absolutely needed more room. But when I came up with this size uh, and kind of tried to think through everything I need to bring, this, I should still be able to totally do it with this trailer. Even with like a vet in here, you know, a bunch of spares, like I might be tight for that situation, but I should still be able to do it. So anyway, I say that to say I'm fine with upgrading it. Like I'm more than happy to spend the money on nice stuff to make it better because it's not like, oh, I'm probably gonna sell it anyway. Uh, so anyway, I mean, this has been a long video, I'm sure. But uh, we test fitted the cars in here. Everything fits good. We still got plenty of room. Another thing I might wanna do is just a fold out step for here. They sell them, they like hinge. So they just like flip down and then it's a step. One thing I noticed with the aluminum trailer is like a steel trailer, this, like they recess it behind the door. So it's kind of like a step up right there. But I think with the aluminum, they make the frame so much thicker that they can't do that. That would be my guess. I don't know. I'm not a trailer manufacturer. But overall guys, I'm super happy with this thing. It's exactly what I wanted. I can't wait to start uh, fixing it up and setting it up for uh, for my uses and uh, get, it, get it dialed in and like nice, super efficient, everything all nice and organized. Oh, I'm stoked. I'm stoked. So uh, let me know what you guys think of the old rig. Take one more look at her from the outside. So much snazzier behind the behind the Fummins. It just makes me happy because, you know, I built the Fummins, built this entire truck specifically to pull an enclosed trailer, and I was just never that into my old trailer. So now I finally have a trailer I really like behind the truck I built specifically just to pull these big trailers. And uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm real happy with the combo overall. Like I said, I like tow rigs. I like tow rigs as much as drift cars or as much as whatever car. I just, I like tow rigs. I like trucks and trailers. So I've been wanting, this is something I wanted for a long time and I'm glad we found exactly what I was looking for. So yeah, I guess that's gonna be it. Uh, we've got an event coming up. Probably won't have time to uh, set it up before then. Hopefully before Clutch Kickers, which, in, which is in a couple of weeks, at least get it like semi set up before that. But uh, either way, we got a new trailer. We managed to find one without having to run the open for any events, which is nice. I, I was, I had a, 
a feeling we were going to have to run the open for the first round of clutch kickers because I didn't think we'd find one in time. So it all panned out, man. It all panned out. So enough jibber jabbering. There's been a lot of jibber jabbering. <laughs> I, uh, I'm going to end it here. Hope to see you guys for the next video. But for now, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Goodbye, guys.